everyone. Welcome to Southern Delight. I am Debbie and today we're going to be making a Christmas wreath for our front door. We have um, just recently came back from vacation. Um, we went to Gatlinburg, Tennessee and had a wonderful, wonderful trip and um, I have got so many ideas from there. If you ever want to get some inspiration, I would advise if you've never been to Gatlinburg, Tennessee and seen, seen the mountains and the snow and the fall leaves, you really need to take a trip and go because I came back refreshed and I have a million ideas so I'm just waiting to get out. Um, it's like a crafter's paradise and if you ever just need just that little bit of push to get you over so that you have all these ideas flowing and you just want something new, visit the mountains. But today to get started for the project, it is now, today is the day after Thanksgiving. It is Black Friday, so most of my viewers are probably out Black Friday shopping. That is perfectly alright. Um, you can watch this video later. But today what I'm going to be doing is showing you some items that I picked up. Um, some of these items I got last year when I uh, got some sales. Can't beat those sales right now. But, um... What you will need for this project is an oval grapevine wreath. I used one of these um, in one of my tutorials on how to make a fall wreath for the front door. I absolutely love this oval shape and um, I'm going to use it again for my Christmas wreath. This one happens to be a 15 by 23 inch. You can get whatever size that you desire and you can also do this with one of the just round wreaths. You'll also need some flowers. I picked these up from a sale at Michael's. Um, I think I got each one of these for like $1.99 each. I picked up this beautiful sparkly magnolia flower. Just one stem is all I need there. This right here are just some Christmas pine, Christmas and pine cones here with a little bit of snow on it. Just need one of those. And then I have a larger pine cones with some snow on it and then this one is a one a stem with pine cones snow and some greenery to it but all I need is just the four of those I'm going to be using the letter P you can use your initial there and you also need some ribbon so I've got my ribbon here and what I'm going to start doing is um, clipping these down. I always just give you an idea and just lay the pattern out to start with. So I'm bending them and usually when I bend them it kind of gives me an idea where I need to cut them. Of course the flower here I'm going to put in the center. I don't see, I'm going to lift this up so you can see what I've done here. This is the placement I'm going to use. I'm putting the pine cone with the greenery on this side the Christmas tree greenery on the other end, the pine cones that have like a bunch of the pine cones here, we're going to lay kind of going up at an angle on the side a little bit. Most of them are going to be going toward this other side with the rest of the pine cones. Then the flower here, we're going to put in the middle. And then what I'm going to do is take the letter here and put it on this side with the bow hanging down here. And this is what we're going to start assembling. So now that I've showed you the placement, we're going to just start cutting. And what I did was I bended, I bent the stem so I know where to cut. I'm going to start clipping. Alright, we've gotten everything trimmed down and um, I went and picked up some floral wire. And we will get started wiring this in. So we know where our placement's going to be, and I'm going to start with the pine cones here. Just so going in on this side here. And I'm going to just take it and take this stem and just kind of poke it in the wreath down here at the bottom, like so. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to wire in these other little areas. I've got one little piece right up here that's sticking out. We're going to give him a quick clip. This did real good. Just 
get my wire here. I like just this wire is really thin, so I like to bend it. I'm gonna give it a little bit more, make it a little bit more sturdier, and then I just take and pick up some of those branches, those vines, and twist it in there. you can just space it out. You don't need to do a whole bunch of wiring on this because when you poke it in it secures it. I'll probably do one about midway and then one closer here. And um, cut me off another piece. Actually I think this one only needs probably two once I secure this big piece here. I think he'll be safe. And I like to use this floral wire because it doesn't, um, you can't see it. So if it shows up, you know, so if you're twisting it and it's still up on top, it blends with all of the leaves and stuff so you can't really see it. Because I think on some of my projects you see us will use pipe cleaners and so forth. And you can still use those. Just on this project, um, I would recommend floral bar because it's, you don't see it. Okay, and we've got that one safe and secure in there. Now I'm going to go over to this other side. I'm going to place the greenery on this side. Using the same technique, I'm going to take slide it in here and get it in place and go back and wire it. grabbing a bunch of these little vines like this, taking the wire and going up underneath them, something like this, fold that down like so, and then just twist. And it just holds it securely in place and then clip off the excess. Your floral wire doesn't look like mine. I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> I have to pull and tug a little bit on it. That's what happens with extensive use. Do one more on this one. This one's really big and bulky. And we've got some kind of sticking out over here to the side. I'm going to do one on the side here just to secure this little guy. If I can get some of this wire undone. It did not look like this coming out of the package. It's all nice and neat. And
that's two down. And then now, this little guy, he's a little bit bulkier. I said I wanted him on that side. Take him. I'm going to move him a little bit further down than the first. When I was first looking at him, I'm going to stick it up underneath these branches a little bit to secure him. And then this being so thick, we're going to bend him up in these other branches like so. That way he's kind of, that makes him a little bit more secure. And then it clip a couple of more of these branches. I have an extra little branch here. Yeah, I think I like that a lot better. And if you have to see what I did there, I put him down at the bottom. Just kind of even, evened it out. And I'm going to take and let me wire him in. I'm going to cut off another piece. But while we were in the mountains, we got to see snow up on the mountains. It wasn't a whole lot. We probably only got a few inches, but I got a chance to make a snowman and um, see some frozen water coming off of the mountain and saw huge icicles. And there's a lot of white and um, on top of the green and stuff. And it kind of just inspired me for this project because um, I'm not using the traditional Christmas colors. If you're following me you've seen that in my living room I've decorated in red and black with the buffalo print and um, they have tons of stuff just tons of ideas and things for that and um, I'm going to be sharing a clip with you of a cabin that we stayed in that gave me the actual inspiration to do my living room which I call it the cozy Christmas cabin if you haven't seen it um, if you go down below and you subscribe to me, it'll give you all of my videos and group them into one where you can actually watch that. Watch me transform my entire living room and get it ready for Christmas. So it's a neat little segment there. And uh, now I'm working on the outside, trying to get it all decorated and ready for Christmas. Got that all securely in place and I've got it wired in. This is what we're looking like. And for the next piece, I'm going to take this beautiful sparkly magnolia and I'm going to put it down here in the bottom part up above the pine cones. Take it down in there. Sometimes I go and use my hot glue gun to secure these. Um, this project I'm not going to. A lot of times I'm finding the hot glue is not holding as well as I'd like. So I'm just doing a little bit of extra wiring when it comes to it. And a lot of times if you take these stems and you bend them and wrap them, they stay in place. Um, they don't go anywhere. And if they do, just take and bend it back in place. Now do some wire with it. With this one, I just twisted it around. Check it in there. And then the leaves, I kind of just tucked down under the pine cones a little bit. take our P and I'm going to lay the P right here just above the green foliage and I'm going to do it kind of sideways, give it a sideways feel and then we're going to wire it in here. So I'm going to make a bow And 
this, I'm probably going to need to secure it twice. So we're going to put one here. And I've twisted it this way. This one we're going to put in a second one here, kind of close to the bottom area. That one's got that one all wired in. And see, as you can see, I put it kind of sideways. And now I'm going to put a beautiful bow right there on that side. Complete tutorial on how to make this bow is called How to Make a Fall Wreath. Um, I will put that link down below in my comment section so that you can find it. It's a quick little tutorial on that. And I use this particular style bow for a lot of my projects. And um, just swap the ribbon out That's all you have to do. But I was originally going to put it over on that side. But I got to looking and I think I want to balance this out a little bit more. Being it has a pea here, pine cones and flowers here. I want a focal point over here, so I'm thinking I'm going to put the bow on this side instead of the other side. And um, we're just going to wire it in here real quickly. So one thing about crafting, I always have a plan. and. Um, Normally I stick right with it, but when you play around with these things, sometimes when you're trying to balance things out, it just, just go with the flow. And you may like your bow over on the other side. You know, it's just personal preference, whatever you would like to do. But I think this will work nicely over here on this side. Because your pine cones might be thinner, or your leaves might be thinner on one side, or fuller on another. So, just kind of use your judgment. most of these items on sale um, so I don't think I went over $30 on this wreath um, $30, $35 I think in all the materials and so forth and just a little bit of time and effort and it doesn't take a whole lot um, usually I can do these wreaths in probably under 30 minutes so um, and then what we're going to do let's see Voila, there you have it. Now I'm going to just take and put some wire here and we're going to hang this wreath on my front door. Alright everyone, this is my completed project. This is what I chose to go on my front door. But um, if you'll stay tuned, I am going to show you four different ways to do this one wreath by just swapping out the bows that are there and the flowers. You can just add your own little personal touch there, and um, if you will, just down below, comment and let me know which one is your favorite.